Libya is one of the most complicated stories on earth. Gaddafi was in power since 1969. It was more than four decades, 42 years. The Arabs bring up rising in 2011. Four times Libya. They're saying that since 2011, this country has gone into complete chaos. We saved a lot of Libyan lives. I want now to Libya. Now we are one. Is it Libya, a country torn apart by civil war for the past decade. But how is the situation on the ground now, today? Gaining access into Libya is extremely difficult and complicated. No tourists are allowed. Only business visas are issued. After two years of trying to get into Libya, I was finally able to obtain a business visa for this extremely restricted and controlled country. So, here we go. <laughs> It's only gonna get better and better. Comme l'exigent les Libyens eux-mêmes. Now, could we have done more after uh, the uh, Gaddafi regime uh, was ended? Well, that's always, uh, uh, you know, second guessing, and I'm sure that there's more we could have done. But let's look at what we did do. A complex and highly dangerous situation. The international effort that we have led in Libya. We finally have hope that our nightmare of 40 years will soon be over. So welcome back to another day in Libya, actually right in the middle of the Sahara Desert right now. Interesting thing about Libya driving through the desert and things, you see a lot of these burnt out cars just in the middle of nowhere and that could have been from from the war times or not too sure. Today we've already been driving for four or five hours. We've got another three or four hours to go through the desert. Started early, got a head start. So we're going to be driving to Tripoli today, the capital city. And I'm going to do my best to film what I can. If you've been watching the previous videos that I've made on, on Libya, it's very difficult to film here. So many restrictions at times being traced by police. The police kind of always know where we are because it's so rare for foreigners to be here. And you know, they're suspicious, especially with the recent history and everything. You know, I'll film what I can and hopefully get a bit of a taste of the city for you. Even now there's cars pulling over and things when they see a guy filming. Anyway, let's get in the car and uh, get out of here. You grab attention really quickly here and so you gotta kinda keep moving. Salam alaikum. Salam. Salam. Let me explain what happened today. You're not going to believe this. This is one of the most insane travel experiences out of all the countries I've been to. I have video footage of it, don't worry. But so many things happened so quickly that I didn't get a time to talk to the camera, but I filmed it, okay? So I'm going to show you the footage in a second. But just let me give you a bit of backstory before I do that. We were driving through the desert, you know, it's a seven, eight hour drive from where we were. We left off from the Algerian, Tunisian, Libyan triangle of border area and headed towards Tripoli, where I am now in the capital, okay? I had a driver, Emad, and my guide, Abu Bakr, who you've seen translating. They both started to get phone calls quite frequently, and then the frequency picked up a lot uh, when we were getting closer we were going to stop by these 300 year old cave houses on the way and have a look anyway all these phone calls were from uh, high-ranking police officers of the area and they were calling up to ask you know where am i what time i am arriving they were tracing us they were getting calls from all the cities in between gadams and these cave houses which are like seven hours apart from each other every city we went through we were getting phone calls asking my whereabouts. We go through multiple checkpoints and things. And then suddenly I see this 
Mercedes Benz with tinted windows, an SUV, with two police officers sitting on it in it and no number plates on the car. And then they come up behind us and they escort us up this hill in this Mercedes Benz with no number plates with two police officers in it. We get up there and then there's cop cars. There's two cop cars sitting up there. 10 or more, I, I counted 10, but there could have been more police officers waiting for me because I'm a foreigner because it's so rare. They said it was for my safety. Anyway, we look around these cave houses. I met a, a local guy there who I talked to. He's a young guy, spoke English. I'll show you that interview in a second. Firstly, let me explain to you what happened next. So these guys were following us everywhere I went. A couple of them had uh, AKs. Even when I went to the toilet, I had two of these cops standing at either side of the door of the toilet. And what happened next was really crazy. Top five most insane travel experiences of my life. But firstly, before I tell you about that, I'm going to show you the interview with the boy. Uh, he's got some interesting insights of what it's like to be a young guy in Libya. Cool, so we've just pulled over and we've met a, a local man. Qasim. Qasim. In Arabic, Qasim in English. Yeah, God, like Qasim. 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 Qasim, yeah. Okay, cool. I'm Nick. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So how is, how is life uh, in, in Libya for a, a young man like yourself? Uh, it's uh, it's quite good. Yeah, I'm comfortable with it. It's hard sometimes, but uh, yeah, we're getting over it. You know, the ambience is good. You know, the ambience. Yeah, people is good, but yeah. uh, just a few things will will annoy you. Like like internet, <laughs> internet, <laughs> internet. Yeah, this yeah. stuff, simple stuff. Yeah, it's improving. Yeah, yeah it's improving. So you feel Humble. like the worst is behind you. What? Like the the worst time has has been in yeah. the past, and now yeah. it's improving. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Uh -huh. And what's the best thing then? Cool weather. Yeah, cool people, cool history. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So culture in general is great. Yeah, very good. And if you had like one message to the world, because I think that, you know, Libya has an image that people are quite scared no, of the country, good. right? And so because what of social media. Right. Yeah. Social media? Yeah. And Before you come to Libya, it was like you, you had the different image like you see now. Yeah, it, seem, it seems more stable for sure. Like yeah. I feel more safe here than I thought I would do. But it's still quite intimidating because there's lots of bullet holes in the walls. Uh, like everywhere you go, you can see the, and there's lots of yeah, uh, military exactly. and things. Right? So I will ask you now, is it hard to get the Libyan visa? Yeah, it's quite a process. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's quite How difficult. How it will be easier in the future. As you say, things are getting better, so hopefully more yeah. tourists can come and, and see. It will start. Yeah. We have a good, we have a lot of, Every landscape we have, we have, we have sea. We have a nice mountain. We have a green mountain. We have a desert. We have right. everything. Yeah, we just have to like stable. Thanks for your time. Yeah, thank you. Shukran. After that, we jumped in the car, and then a Dodge, like a really nice Dodge. I'm going to show you the footage of this. A really nice Dodge police car, souped up, boy racer style pulls in front of us. Sirens go off, lights on, drives, and tells us to follow him. And then behind us, the, the blacked out Mercedes with no number plates comes up behind us. And behind that, a police truck with the sirens going, with the lights going, following us. We were getting escorted down this mountain face and just getting led all the way through. And it was like being a president, you know, all these police officers, 10 or more police officers, three police cars escorting me because it's so rare. And they, they say, you know, we want to look after you and things. And I mean, many people are saying it's, it's safe here and it does feel safe but giving 10 or more police officers and three police cars. I don't know if that gives you the feeling of being safe or or the opposite. I, I, and I say that I don't know, I genuinely, genuinely don't know, but they were very nice people. Anyway, have a look at this footage. Like now, he's flashing with his lighter. Who's behind? Mr. Nick. really felt like I was a president or something, you know, to be sitting in the back of a big blacked out SUV, had tinted windows and things, and then in the middle of these, these cop cars, it was, you know, through checkpoints, past military and everything, in Libya, for that to be happening in Libya, mind blowing, you know, I'll, I'll never forget that. They were very, very kind police officers. Don't get me wrong, they weren't intimidating to me. They were smiling and, and welcoming and things. But yeah, just to be in the presence of those 10 guys was, was something. It caught us all off guard. That's why I didn't really get footage whilst there of me talking. And then something that was really quite striking. For kilometers and kilometers along this road, just utter destruction. Basically, to me, it looked like there were more buildings with uh, bullet holes and, and missile holes than without. So here's some footage of, of what I saw along that drive.
So you can see that um, I didn't, I obviously couldn't film military and things, but the military presence there was quite lifted compared to what I've seen in other parts of, of the of the country. You know, we did see a, a lot more um, military presence, still not as much as I expected coming to this country, honestly speaking. It was really quite moving to see that much, you know, destruction and people are still living their lives and things. And it is a lot safer now. Apparently in 2021 has been the best year for, for many years for this country in terms of security. It really seems to be a lot more stable. That's not just my view, that's from the locals and things. Uh, many locals seem to have that same kind of outlook on the country, even in different parts of the country, not just in Tripoli, not just out in the desert cities. It seems to be kind of spread out, but you know, we will continue to learn more as we travel more in this country. Anyway, then we come into the city and then we go to some really nice neighborhoods, some big expensive houses. Here's some clips of that. Ordinary, very ordinary, you know. And then we went to a, a coffee shop. We were just sitting there having a coffee and this girl came over and approached us. She saw my camera and she was like talking about the brand and things and she's like, oh, I've got a horse riding club just down the street. Please, after you finish your coffee, we would love for you to come and have a look at our horse riding club. So of course we took that invitation. I really wanted to talk to a female in Libya just to get the perspective because it can be sometimes hard to get an interview with a girl, but luckily she was willing. So we drove over to the horse riding club, met the locals, here are some clips of the, of the young kids riding horses. A scene that doesn't really come to mind when you think of Libya. So we're here with Hanin and uh, we were just sitting in a coffee shop and Hanin kindly invited us to a horse club. So can you just explain to us a bit about your horse club and what goes on here? And then the work is the Arabic language, which is a step of the road, every day. Basically it's for the uh, children from five years old and above. It's really to start teaching children from the beginning how to interact with animals in general and horses. Mm -hmm. and teach them how to ride horses and do horse jumping effectively. Where I come from, many people would look at Libya and think that women would be oppressed here. Is that true or do you feel comfortable and confident in your society? No, the opportunities is the same for both sexes, male and female. And they're already doing that by providing children, males and females, and they will all be getting the same opportunities for women as well, in every field, in Libya in general. Do you like living in Libya and you feel safe and comfortable here? Uh, with all honesty, she loves living in here, and she would not live anywhere else except in Libya. She wouldn't mind traveling to learn about different cultures, but eventually come back here, and in particular to this place here with the horses. Do you think it's okay for foreigners to come here? بالتأكيد إحنا ليبيا فيها أماكن هلبة رغم إن كان في عدة حروب فيها. For sure, she encourages that and welcomes that, and she loves for people to come in so she can show them herself about our culture and our respect for other people, and she would love to have some of these people come in particular to her club in here so she can show them what it's like to be. In a, with the Libyans. Okay, great. And what's the name of this club, just in case anybody wants to come Nadi visit? It's called Nadi Hadi Maratania. Okay, Nadi Maghrib Al-Arab in the Russian Arab Qafz Al-Hawajaz, Riyas Dr. Marwan Fouzi Bishia, Tadribat Al-Faris Al-Dawli Muhammad Al-Timta. Shukran, shukran. Thank you very much. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Lovely to hear the perspective of a female living in Libya and uh, she was really confident young woman, you know, she was, she, she knew what she wanted, she came up to us, invited us and then she was just so passionate about the, the horse riding club and, and felt so strongly about how much she loves her country and how much she loves living here and how she doesn't feel oppressed or anything. So it is really nice to get the perspective of a woman living in Tripoli, the capital of Libya. We also went to a shopping mall for some lunch, uh, the other guys got pizza and I got like this kind of Lebanese style mix of, of salads and things. The 
shopping mall was just, you know, like any kind of generic shopping mall. You could be anywhere in the world, families everywhere, you know, having a nice lunch or doing some shopping. And then we went to a perfume shop and met a man there. Imad. Nick. Nice to meet you. How's business going? Yeah, he said it's going pretty well actually. And has that always been the case or has it been picking up more recently? Yeah. It's like a, a brand all across the Arab world really. They even have a branch in London. Yeah. So it's well known. So he said its customer base is quite big and business is always booming. Feel comfortable and safe now in 2021? Because I mean, Libya and the international media, when we're in the, in the Western world, we turn on the television and it says all bad things about Libya, but can you give me an insider's perspective? You feel safe, that at least in Tripoli? I'm in Australia. No, no, I'm Completely safe. Mia, Mia. Shukran. So you can see the, the feeling of the locals and, and generally it does seem to they do seem to feel like the situation is getting more secure and more secure as time moves forward. Even in the last six months, apparently, it's night and day difference. Before, you wouldn't really go out at certain times of the day and things, but now a lot of people feel comfortable. That's what I've heard from certain locals. I obviously can't speak on behalf of all Libyans. I'm just, you know, passing on what I have heard from the people that I've been fortunate enough to meet because uh, so far I've met amazing people. Can't wait to see what comes next. You know, there's so much to see in this country and it really takes you by surprise. It's nothing like what I expected coming into to this country. A lot more stable than I expected. Obviously, I've got more time coming, so we'll, we'll, we'll reassess and reassess as time moves forward. But so far, really good experience. You can see, though, that there has been a lot of war and fighting here. It's very, very visible. Even if you're just in the middle of nowhere in a desert, you'll come across it like a lone building and it'll be all smashed up and bullet holes and things. It's not all buildings, but it is quite a lot. And obviously that's expected with all the fighting that has gone on here, sadly, over the past years. One more interesting point before I finish the video, the petrol situation. So in Tripoli you have pretty good access to petrol, the petrol stations are, are stocking petrol, there are some rushes sometimes where there's a shortage, but when you go out of the city, most of the, the petrol stations that I saw were closed and any that were open had huge lines in front of them, or you had to like pay to get access into the petrol station and then you could buy the petrol. If you haven't seen the past video, petrol in Libya cost 3 cents per litre. You heard that right, 3 cents a litre. So you can fill up your, your tank with like $2. What happens a lot is people will go there and they will fill up tanks and tanks and tanks and then they will resell it for like 45% more of the price. We had to meet up with people in the middle of nowhere and they would get petrol cans out of the car and help fill up our petrol tank because you know petrol is so scarce but so cheap at the same time it's very contradictory you know anyway i know this video was a bit messy but like i say these things aren't you know normal occurrences to get escorted and for police to come out of nowhere and you know at first i was a bit concerned but after all you know i must say I must make this clear that I do believe that the police had the best of intentions. They really were doing their best to help me and make me feel comfortable in their country and for that I can be nothing but grateful. So I just want to say thank you to those guys. They were coming from a place of authenticity and they really wanted to help make my experience as smooth as possible so I can only thank you guys for that. Just quickly please keep in mind that I'm doing the best to film in certain places it's very, very strict. Uh, we've been refused to film in certain places and filming downtown in Tripoli is really kind of pushing your luck because there's so many security forces and things and I don't really want to like push it too much. We are going to visit downtown Tripoli in upcoming videos, but we're going to 
try and do it in a way that's not too, you know, like look at the foreigner with the camera kind of situation. Bear with me on that. To get any access to this country is an extreme privilege, like I've mentioned. Please keep that in mind. I'm, I'm doing my best to get the footage that I get, even pushing boundaries in some areas. So please bear with me on that and uh, hopefully we can paint a, a reasonably whole picture of Libya. Unreal day. Thank you so much for watching. And in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.